we have to test because you actually might hear from God and then misinterpret it. You actually might hear from God and misinterpret it. In other words, yes, God always speaks truthfully. God does not lie when he reveals something to us, However, though he can send lying spirits out. But when God's speaking to his children whom he loves, he does not send lying spirits. God cannot lie. But you can misapply what God actually says. Let me prove it to you. In the book of Acts, this happens. At the end of Paul's third missionary journey, he's always going to these churches And all the churches, everyone he goes to, they're worshiping, and then the Holy Spirit lays on that church's heart, hey, Paul, uh, I feel like God's saying when you get to Jerusalem, like something bad's going to happen to you. Paul goes to the next church. Hey, Paul, when you get to Jerusalem, the Holy Spirit told me to let you know you're going to get arrested. Hey, hey, Paul, when you show up, and this just keeps happening time and time again. Paul actually says this in Acts chapter 20. He's telling the Ephesian elders, now behold, I am going to Jerusalem. Why is he going to Jerusalem? Because he is constrained by the Spirit. He is, I didn't know what that word meant, I had to look it up so I don't feel bad, compelled, urged on by the Holy Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. Paul says this is the gift of prophecy in action. Every time I show up at church, all these different cities, everyone's telling me how when I get to Jerusalem something bad is going to happen to me. I don't know what that's going to be, but at the same time, I know the Spirit of God wants me to go there. He's compelling me to go there. So that's the picture. Everybody's telling him something bad's going to happen by the Holy Spirit. They're prophetically speaking into his life. Paul still knows, yeah, but the Holy Spirit wants me to go. Now check this out. This is the whole, this is the payoff. In the next chapter, when he gets to Tyre, same thing's happening. They're worshiping, they're praising the Lord, and someone's sharing what the Holy Spirit's saying. But look how it's different. Having sought out the disciples, we stayed there for seven days in Tyre, and through the Spirit, they were telling Paul not to go to Jerusalem. Did you catch that? Through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, they said, Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. Well, what did we just see in the last chapter? Paul says, the Holy Spirit told me I have to go to Jerusalem, and you're saying the Holy Spirit told me not to go to Jerusalem. Which one is it? Did the Holy Spirit lie? We can't say that. That would bust our theology big time. They can't both be right. Paul, the Holy Spirit can't be telling Paul to go to Jerusalem and telling these other people to tell Paul not to go to Jerusalem. What's going on here? Here's what I think is happening. The Holy Spirit really did tell Paul to go to Jerusalem. These other disciples... They really did hear from the Holy Spirit that something bad is going to happen to Paul. But this is where their own motives got mixed up. Because they love Paul, they thought, well, if God's telling me something bad is going to happen to him, that must mean that God doesn't want him to go there. And they start interpreting and applying the message that God gave them wrongly. It's true, God told you that bad things are going to happen to Paul, but he just wants you to know that this is all part of the plan. It doesn't mean that Paul shouldn't have gone to Jerusalem. But these Christians made the assumption that, well, since the Holy Spirit showed us this, this must mean that he doesn't want God to go there. Brothers and sisters, this is how the gift of prophecy plays out today. Just because you get a sense of the Holy Spirit of something, it doesn't mean you're going to interpret it or act on it correctly.